Hello and welcome to my coding course React the Complete Guide. In this course, you will learn the essential tools and skills to design, develop, and deploy React applications from scratch. My name is Basir and I'll be your instructor in this course. I have 17 years of programming experience in international companies like RI Vision in Montreal, and now I'm a coding instructor in Udemy with more than 23K students. I designed this comprehensive course for anyone seeking to learn React from concept to applications. By the end of this course, you'll be able to learn basic concepts like components, states, props, events, and forms. Put basic concepts into actions by developing a to-do apps. Learn advanced topics like hooks, context, redox, testing, and type checking. Put advanced topics into actions by developing apps like a shopping cart. And you will build a real-world application like a fully functional e-commerce website with backend API, beautiful charts, Google Maps, and payment gateway. You need to open the code editor along with me and start coding throughout this course. I teach you installing VS Code and its extensions to code like professional developers, using payment gateways like PayPal and Stripe for online payments, incorporate React charts, Google Maps, Material and Bootstrap UI framework into your apps, and publish your work on the net using cloud servers like Heroku and Netlify. This course is for all level developers who want to be a professional developer and find a job in more than 22 million job opportunity around the world. No requirement is necessary for this course and having a passion of coding is enough. Feel free to take a look at the course preview and enroll if it's along with your ambitions. In this lesson, we are going to install the tools that we need in this course. What we need to install is a code editor, a web browser, and Node.js. Let's install them together. For code editor, go to this address, code.visualstudiocode.com slash download. And here, based on your operating system, select the right option. If you are using Windows, click on this icon. In my case, I'm going to install Download Mac. When you click on the download button, you will be redirected to a new page and a new file will be downloaded here. For Mac OS, it's super easy. Just you double click on the downloaded file and it install it in your computer. But for Windows, here are the steps. What you need to do is to double click on that file. You will have a dialog like this. Click on next to go to the license agreement and then click next again to select the installation location. And after that, you will get a question for creating shortcuts. And the last screen is selecting additional task. Select the default options and click next until to the end and then click on install. After a while, VS Code will be installed on your computer and by clicking on finish, while launch Visual Studio Code is selected, you will have a window like this. That's it. The VS Code is installed on our computer and it's time to install some extensions for VS Code, which makes coding much faster and better. We are going to use bracket pair colorizer to find it, just type bracket, and you will have this option, bracket pair colorizer 2, and click on install, because I have already installed it. I have uninstall button, but you need to click on install button. The next one, type ES7 React Redux here, and you will have 
this extension, click on install. The next one is ESLint. It just shows the errors of your code and install it. The next one is JavaScript ES6 code a snippet. Like always, to access to this one, you need to type JavaScript ES6. And as you see, you will get as a first option this and click on install button. And the last one is prettier. Just type prettier in this text box, select this and click on install buttons. After installing Prettier, it's time to add free settings to the VS Code. Press Ctrl Shift P and you will have a box. Type JSON to get this command preference open setting. You will have a bunch of options here, but we are going to add three new lines JavaScript.format enable to false and editor.format unsafe to true. Also, we are going to set prettier.single code to true. By having these three lines of code throughout this course, you will have same behavior in VS Code like me. The first one, disable JavaScript format and enable editor format. So Prettier will format your code instead of built-in JavaScript format. Also, by having prettier.single code, instead of having double code in your JavaScript file, you will have single code, which is based on the best practice in coding. Other options are completely optional, and there is no need to add them at all. But what you need to have are these three settings. Just type them like this and click on save. And then you will have VS Code setting like me on your computer. Let's go for web browser. For web browser, we want to use Google Chrome in this course because it has a lot of options for developers to make web development much easier and faster. To install it, go to this address, google.com slash chrome and click on download Chrome button. Based on your operating system, a file will be downloaded and by double clicking on it and following the instructions, you will have VS Code on your computer. If you are using Windows, here are the steps to install it. After clicking download button and downloading that file here, you need to open the file if you are using Internet Explorer and for next step, you will have a dialog like this. You need to confirm it. Click on yes in the user account control. And after that, uh, installing progress will appear like this. And after that, you will have VS Code icon on your desktop and in your programs folder. And you can access it from start menu. That's it about the VS Code and the last tools that we are going to use in this course is Node.js. We need Node.js to create React application and also to create backend for advanced lessons. To install it, go to this address, node.js.org slash en, and you will be redirected to this screen. Select this one, I mean the version that is higher. In my case, I'm using 16, but in your time, it may be higher. And after clicking on it, a new file will be downloaded. And by double clicking on it and following the instructions, you will have Node.js on your computer. For Node.js, you may need to restart your computer to apply changes and you should be able to use it in your computer. If you are using Windows, here is the steps. After double clicking on the downloaded file, you will have a dialog box like this. Click on next. And then for license agreement, select I accept and click on next. In the next step, select the default destination folder and also default options in custom setup. And at the end, just click on install. At the end, you will have Node.js on your computer. At this time, you need to restart your computer and then 
open Visual Studio Code from Terminal menu, select New Terminal and here enter Node-V and press Enter. You will see the version of Node.js in your computer. For yours, it may be V16, it doesn't matter. Both of them are correct, 14 and 16. And we are ready to start developing React application at this point. Let's go for the next lesson to create React app. Hello and welcome to the Hello World application for our React course. What we're gonna do in this lesson is to create our very basic React application using create React app package. First of all, you need to open your code editor. In this case, we are using VS Code as a code editor. And then open integrated terminal in the code editor. It's in the terminal menu, click new terminal. When you have the terminal here, we need to go to the desktop folder. In my case, I just type CD desktop with capital D and press enter. I'm in the desktop folder and what I'm going to do here is to create React application in this folder. To create a React application, we need to run this command npx create-react-app npx is a command from Node.js, so you need to have Node.js installed on your computer. You will learn how to install it from the previous lessons. The Create React app is a package from React, and by using this package, we can create a React application. As a parameter for this command, we need to enter the name of app, and the name of app is going to be react dash basic-app. You can enter whatever you like as a React application. Press enter. It may ask a question about installing Create React App package. You just need to enter yes and press enter. And by running this command, it will start installing packages on your computer to run React application. So just wait for finishing this process. Great, it just finished. And here we have React Basic app inside desktop folder. What we need to do is to add this folder to the VS Code. From File menu, click Add Folder to Workspace. Click Desktop and select React Basic app and click Add. After that, click on Explorer icon to see your folder and the subfolders and files inside React Basic app. The next step is going to be running our application. Click on plus icon to create a new terminal. And as you see, the folder name that you are in is the folder that you have here, React Basic app. To run the project, type npm start and press enter. Wait a moment to get this result. By having this icon and this text at this address, localhost column 3000, you successfully created and launched your very basic React application. What we're gonna do as a last step of this lesson is to change the content of this to Hello World because it's a Hello World application. What I'm gonna do, go to Code Editor, from SRC, select app.js, and then get rid of the content inside the Return section, remove all of them, and enter H1, Hello, world and the exclamation mark and save your file you can use ctrl s or from file menu click on save button let's check the result great here instantly we get the result so whenever you make a change in your code after saving your file you will get the result instantly inside the browser without refreshing your page that's the benefit of using Create React App 
for our application. Great, that's it. What we did in this session is to create a Hello World application using React app. And for next sessions, we will learn the main concepts of React, including JSX, state, props, and much more. Until next lessons, bye-bye. In this lesson, we want to have an introduction to JSX. Let's get to code. And in the app.js inside src app.js from previous lesson, we are going to define a JSX variable. I'm quite sure that you are familiar with JavaScript. So for defining a constant, we use this style const. The name of this variable is element, but the data type here is not number, string, or any primary data type. It's JSX. It's a mix of JavaScript and HTML. Let's define it. As you see, it's like an HTML code. And inside that, I define hello world. This variable is a JSX. JSX produce React element. So we can use this element instead of this return part. So what I'm going to return here is the element, and the element is a JSX variable. Let's save the file and check the result. As you see, we are getting the same result by defining a JSX variable and using that variable as a return for this function. JSX has many features and capabilities that we can use that in our React application. Let us start by first feature, which is embedding expression in JSX. In this example, we are going to declare a variable called name. Let's define a variable named John Smith const name equal to John Smith. We can use this variable in a JSX. So what I'm going to do here is to get rid of world and use the name variable here to use a variable inside a JSX ex expression. We need to use curly braces. And inside that, we can enter the variable there. So let's save it and check the result. Huh. As you see, it says hello and it concatenates the hello with the value inside name variable, which is John Smith. Also, we can embed the result of calling a JavaScript function in a JSX variable. In this example, what I'm going to do here is to define a function. Let's create a function. Let's say format name. It accepts user name. And inside that, it return user name capitalized to uppercase function to convert the username to full uppercase. In the JSX here, I can use format name function. So I enter format name. And as a parameter, I pass the name variable to format name function. Let's save the file and see how it works. As you see, it converted the John Smith to uppercase. So inside a JSX, you can use a variable or a function. And that's the beauty of JSX. JSX itself is an expression too. I mean, after compilation, JSX expression becomes regular JavaScript function calls and evaluate to JavaScript objects. And this means that you can use JSX inside if a statement or for loop, assign it to variables, accept it as a arguments, and return it from functions. Let's define a function here. I'm going to define a function and set the function name to get greetings. This function accept username as a parameter. And if username exists, 
then I'm going to return a JSX in this function h1 hello and I'm gonna use format name function and pass username as a parameter to function and don't forget to close the opening curly braces otherwise if username is empty or null what I'm gonna return here is another JSX h1 you can use h2 paragraph dev whatever you like I, it's just for test hello and it's a stranger save it so we can use get greeting as a return value right here get greeting let's enter a name as a parameter Jane Doe and save it let's check the result as you see the result is Jane Doe capital case so what it does is to return the result of get greeting function inside get greeting function we check the username if it does exist we return hello and use the variable here and pass it to the format name and inside format name we convert Jane Doe to the uppercase that's why we are getting this result if we pass empty string and save it we get this result hello stranger even if we get rid of empty string and just return get greeting we get the same result because in this case username is undefined and it evaluate to false and this line will run we can specify attributes with JSX you may use codes to specify a string literal as an attribute let's test it what I'm gonna do here is to define a new JSX variable named image in the image JSX and it's gonna be an image tag for image tag we need to define two attributes the first attribute is src and it's gonna be a string literal so I use double quote here and the address is a slash logo 192.png it's the same name that we have in the public here and set alternative text to logo 2 I'm going to render image get rid of get greeting here and enter image as a return value for this function let's save it and check the result aha uh -huh. here we have an image in the screen so what we did is to specify attributes for an image tag and use the image variable as a return value for this function also we can use curly braces to embed a javascript expression in an attribute so let's define user image as a variable and set the path to slash logo 192.png and inside the src instead of having a literal string I'm gonna use an expression as and as I said before for defining an expression we need to use curly braces and inside that we can enter the expression name the variable name let's save it and check the result as you see we are getting the same result so in this JSX variable we are using two attributes the first one is src and here we are using a expression and the second one is alternative text and we are using a string literal for expression it should be wrapped inside curly brackets and for a string it should be wrapped inside quotes or double quotes don't forget since JSX is closer to JavaScript to HTML 
React DOM uses camel case property naming convention instead of HTML attribute name. I mean, for the image, if you want to set a class to it, you should not use class. Instead of it, it should be class name with capital N. Sample class. The next topic in this lesson is specifying children with JSX. If a tag is empty, you may close it immediately with slash angle bracket, like this one. For this image, we can use this way too, because it's a self-closing tag, the image tag. But also we can define JSX that has children. Let's define it for the element here. What I'm gonna do is to get rid of this content, define a div, inside div, define h1, inside that, enter hello, and use name as a variable, and inside that, define a paragraph, good to see you. And as you see, the syntax is very similar HTML. We have parent element and child element, and we can render the element like this. Let's save it, and here is the result. Also here, we can simply render the image that we have defined in this line here. Let's check it. Uh-huh, the header one, paragraph, and the image. Great. What we did in this lesson is to get familiar with JSX and we created some JSX variables like image, div, paragraph, and we combined them together using regular JavaScript functions and variables. That's it about this lesson. And for next lesson, we are going to get familiar with rendering elements. Until next lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we're gonna learn how React render elements into the web page. In a React application, index.js is the main entry point of the application. You may not be familiar with the code here, so what I'm gonna do is to just rename it to index backup and then I'm going to create a new file inside SRC folder and set the name to index.js. At the end of this lesson, we will delete index.js and rename index backup to index. But what we are going to do in the index.js is to test rendering element into DOM or document object model. To do that, first of all, we need to have a div somewhere in the HTML file. The HTML file is inside public index.html. If you scroll down here, you will find a div and the ID of that div is root. Inside index.js, we will access to that div and render React element inside that. First of all, let's create a React element like what we did in previous lessons. I'm going to create an H1 and enter hello world there. In the next line, I'm going to render this element into the web page. To do that, we use a React DOM package. React DOM is a package from React and we need to import it like this. In the line one, type import, react, dom all capital, from react dash dom small. And in line three, we are going to call a render function from this object. Render function in React accept two parameters. The first parameter is the element that we are going to render. And the second parameter is the container, which is an HTML element. 
here we are going to access to this div to access to a div in html we use document dot get element by id and as a parameter we enter the name of that id which is root in this case put semicolon and save your file from terminal menu open a new terminal and while you are in the project folder type npm start if you already have npm start running there is no need to do this step and here is the result we have hello world in the screen that's it we have learned how to render react element into the web page using react dom dot render method if you check the index backup here we are rendering a component which is app from app.js not a react element it's a feature of react that it's possible to render react components react elements let's delete index.js and rename index backup to index that's it about this lesson for the next lesson we are going to create components and props until next lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to have an introduction to components components are like javascript functions that accept arbitrary inputs called props and return react elements describing what should appear on the screen to create a component right click on src click new file and set the component name i'm going to create a component name welcome welcome component is gonna show hello world on the screen so as i said before components are functions so create a function and set the function name to welcome and what i'm gonna return is a jsx h1 and enter hello world that's it we created our very first component named welcome to use this component we need to export it export default welcome so by having export default we can use this component in other files to use this component what we need to do is to go to the index.js as you see we are using app component from app.js but in this case we are going to use welcome component so just remove app and enter welcome check the style of using component we treat it like a html element we need to import welcome import welcome from it's in the same folder welcome.js we can enter welcome.js or only welcome there is no need to put .js at the end of files while you are importing stuff great let's test the result open your terminal if you already have npm start running just check the result uh-huh we have hello world in localhost column 3000 if you don't have it just run npm start and press enter to run it in the project folder good the next step we can make the welcome message parametric using props in the welcome.js enter a parameter named props and we can use this parameter to make the welcome component parametric i'm going to say hello to the user instead of world get rid of world and put a pair of carry brackets enter props and enter a dot and name so in the welcome component we made the welcome component parametric let's go to the usage of welcome in the index.js and here as you see we can set a parameter 
or a property for welcome component here and it's gonna be name and let's enter the name to John. When React render this component, it pass John's as a field of props. And the name of that field is the name that you enter here. So it's gonna be name. So to access to the John, we type props.name. Let's test it. Refresh. As you see, it changed to hello John. So that's the way we define a component and we pass parameters to the component using props. We can define components using ES6 class instead of functions. Let's define the class component, right click, create new file. Let's set the component name to message. .js. As you see, it's capital M. All components should start with capital character. And define a class, set class name to message, and it extends react.component. That's another way of creating component. It's class-based component. We need to import react from react package like this. It's import. Inside message component, we need to define a function named render. And in this function, we use return. And what we return here will be rendered into the screen. Let's make it h1 message and enter the prop for the props to access to the props we use this dot props dot and here i'm going to use a small message so the message component render h1 and inside that we show a message and the text of message is coming from props dot message let's export it export default message like what we did for the welcome component to use this go to the index.js and right after welcome create message component enter message with small s react is great and close it. We need to import message, otherwise we get this message. Message is not defined. Like what we did to import, welcome, import message from dot slash message. Let's test it. Refresh, aha, uh -huh. hello. React is great. Good, we tested two ways of creating components in React. The first one is using functional component and the second one is using class-based component. We will use functional component unless we have to use a class-based component, which will be discussed about it in next lessons about state and life cycles. The next topic for this lesson is about composing component. Component can refer to other component in their output. I mean, inside the welcome message here, we can create a container like this, move the heading one inside that, and use the message component and enter the message like, how are you? And close it. So, Inside the component, we can use another component. Let's import that component here using import message from dot slash message. And let's check the result. As you see, hello, John, and message, how are you? This is welcome component, and this one is message component. Inside welcome component, we have used the message components. So it's composing components. At the end of this lesson, 
I'm going to edit index.js and instead of having welcome and message here, I'm going to cut them from here and use app component as it was at the very beginning of this session. And then go to app component here. And what I'm gonna do here is to remove all content here and return a div and inside that div I'm gonna return welcome and message so the app component is the parent component which returns two components welcome and message to import welcome just press control space and you will get a recommendation like this by clicking on it automatically welcome will be imported here Let's do that for this one. Select message from rc slash message and it's gonna be imported here. Save the file and check the result. We are getting the same result. Let's get rid of the last one and only have welcome. And as you see, we have hello John and the message is how are you? Here we can get rid of unused imports like this one and this one. And that's the end of this lesson. Here is the code inside app.js, welcome.js, and message.js. In this step, we are going to install React Developer Tools extension for Google Chrome. Search for React Developer Tools in Google and press Enter. Select the first link and you will be redirected to Chrome Web Store and the name of this extension is React Developer Tools. More than 2 million users downloaded this extension. Click on Install it because I have already installed it. I have Remove, but you need to click on Green Install button. And then after a while, you will see React Developer Tools here, I mean here. And if you go to the localhost column 3000 and from menu of Chrome, select more tools, select developer tools, you will have a window like this and you have two new item, its components and profilers. They are coming from this extension. So after installing this extension, you will have components and profiler here. If you click on components, you will see the structure of component in this screen. The main components is app and there is no props for apps. The second one is welcome and it's the child of app components and the props of welcome is John. It's exactly what you set in the app.js in this point. Welcome component has a child and its message component. Message component has a props. The name of props is message and the value is how are you. If, if you check your code inside the welcome, you have a message component as a child of welcome component and the props is like this. So by using React Developer Tools inside DevTools of Chrome extension, you can see the structure, the props, and all information about the React applications in one single place. Great, that's it about this lesson. Until next lesson, which is about state and life cycles. Bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to work with state and lifecycle method in React components. What we're gonna do is to create a component named clock and show lifetime on the screen. Right click on src, new file, and set file name to clock.js. First of all, I'm gonna create a functional component. Define clock. It accepts props. And inside that, we are going to return 
crops dot date dot date dot to locale a string let's wrap it inside h1 and move it inside that as we saw before to enter dynamic data like this we need to wrap it inside curly braces so it's the clock function and it returns a jsx and the jsx shows date inside props object let's export it export default clock good we are going to use this component inside app.js so instead of welcome component we are going to render clock component as you see we have this recommendation here press tab to import clock automatically in line 2 and then close clock component let's check the result we are getting this error it says cannot read property to locale a string the reason is in the clock we need to define the reason is we don't have date prop in the clock component let's define it the date is coming from current date we get access to the current date using new date good let's check the result uh -huh. as you see we have current date here but the thing is it doesn't update every second we need to update the seconds minutes and hours in this screen it just show the time at the render time just for one time we are going to make it like a live clock so when it comes to update the ui like what we need here we need to convert functional component to class component. here is the steps to convert clock functional component to a class component first of all comment this lines using control forward slash and define class clock it extends react.component and we need to import react from react second step define render method and inside render method we need to return this it's exactly the one that we return in clock function for props put this before props and this refer to the clock instance save it and check the result we are getting the same result but still the time is not live here we are going to change 12 to 13 we need to use states so in the app.js instead of passing data as a prop we are going to create a state in the clock component so this.props is going to be this.state.date let's get rid of this code we don't need it anymore by having this change if you save your file and check the result you will get this error it says a state is undefined here to fix this issue the next step is to creating constructor for clock component constructor accept props as a parameter and inside that we have to call super props to pass props to the parent class which is react.component in this case after this it's time after this it's time to set initial value for state the initial value is gonna be an object and inside this object we have date field and the value of date field is new date save your file and check the result as you see there is no error but still the date is unchanged the next step is gonna be adding lifecycle method to the class first of all we want to set up a timer whenever clock is rendered to the web page for the first time 
This is called mounting in React. To define this lifecycle method, type component did mount as a method for this class. What we're gonna do when this component render in the screen is to set a timer ID. This dot timer ID equal to set interval set interval accept two parameter the first parameter is a function and second parameter is the interval based on millisecond inside this function i'm going to update the state to update the state use this dot set a state and change the value of date to the current date that's it so set a state is a special method in react component that update the state don't change the state like this you can only use this style in the constructor not in other functions good let's check the result uh-huh as you see it works now the time here is life the next life cycle method that we need to define here is to free up the timer after closing this page after removing this component from the screen the name of this method is component will unmount define this function component will unmount and inside that we need to free up this dot timer id use clear interval and pass this dot timer id as a parameter so when you refresh the page this method will run and it just free up the space that occupied by set interval in the component did mount so what we did in this lesson is to create a live timer live clock in the screen and it gets updated every second using this command set interval and by updating the state we have the change in the screen like this because the data here is coming from state and the state is changing every second in this line we need to use state correctly we cannot update state directly like what we did here the only place that we can update it directly is in the constructor function okay that's it about this lesson for the next lesson we are going to learn handling events in the react components until next lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to talk about handling events handling events is very similar to handling events on document object model elements i mean in the html elements let's see how it works in an html elements inside src right click and create a new file and set file name to a component name like toggle button dot js here i'm going to create a very simple button function toggle button and inside that what i'm gonna return is a very simple button and i'm going to use the html style event handling on click and using double quote let's set it to alert hello and close it and let's set the name of button to hello at the end we need to export the fault toggle button save it and inside app.js instead of returning clock i'm going to render toggle button as we get the suggestion here by pressing tab automatically it's gonna be imported and let's see what we have here we have hello 
But if I click on it, it does not work. And we are getting this warning, invalid event handler property on click. Did you mean on click with capital C? In React, when we want to handle an event like on click, we should use the camel case style. So instead of small c, we, would, we need to see capital C. Also, it's, it cannot be a literal string like this. Let's see what we get. If I click on unclick, I'm getting this error. It says expected to be a function, not a string. So what we need to do is to copy the content of this, get rid of double quotes, and use curly brackets to put a JavaScript function. And then define a function using arrow function. And inside that function, I enter the command, which is alert. If I save it, automatically it's going to get formatted like this. And let's see what we get. Now, if I click on hello, I'm getting the right result. Alert hello will appear here. So we implemented onclick handler on a button and we run a command like this. Another difference between HTML event handling and handling event in React is that you cannot return false to prevent default behavior in React. You need to use prevent default explicitly. Let's test it. I'm going to create a dev move the button inside that div and create a link. Let's set href to, to hashtag page and define unclick. Inside unclick, I'm going to define a function name, handle click and set the caption of this link to page. Let's define handle click here right before return. Define a function handle click. And in this function, I'm going to just alert linked clicked. Okay, let's make a screen Y. And here is the code of this component. Let's test it without having prevent default. If I click on page, I get link clicked, but I will be redirected to the page. If you want to prevent the default behavior, which is going to another page, you need to pass E as a event parameter for click event. And before any command, use e.preventDefault to prevent redirecting to another page. Let's test it again. I just go to the home page, click on page and click on OK. As you see, the URL did not change because we are using prevent default and the link will not work as it expected to do. Great. Let's improve the toggle button and what we are going to do is to mix event handling with states. What I'm going to do here is to convert this component to a class component because I'm going to use state class toggle component extends react dot. You know, by pressing dot, automatically it gets imported component and get rid of parentheses. Also, for handle click, get rid of function because it's the method of this component, toggle button class. And for the return, wrap it inside render function like this. Create render function and move return to the render function. That's the way we convert a function component to a class component. For handle click, we need to use this dot because 
handle click is part of toggle button object and we need to access that using this great let's see if it works or not i click on hello uh-huh it works i'm going to update this what i'm gonna do is to define an state for is toggle on like what we did in previous lesson we need to define a construct or function that accept props and inside that call super props let's define default state like is toggle on by default is true and in the handle click let's get rid of the code here and set this dot set state here i'm going to use the second style of state which is a function so instead of setting a new state i'm going to define a function and in this function we have a parameter which is a state and inside this function what i'm gonna return is the new state in the new state i can use the previous state here so it's gonna be is toggle on to set the new value for is toggle on i check state dot is toggle on i mean the previous value of is toggle on and if it's true return false otherwise return true let's save it and let's rename small t to capital t to respect the camel case naming that's it for handle click i'm going to get rid of this link and for the on click instead of defining this sample function i'm going to use this dot handle click so when you click on hello this function will run let's check the result if i click on hello what do i get i'm getting an error it says cannot read properties set a state of undefined why do we get this error here we need to be careful about the meaning of this in handle click function in javascript class method are not bounded by default i mean this does not refer to the toggle button it refers to handle click itself so to fix this issue and pointing this to the toggle button instance we need to use this line of code in the constructor this dot handle click equal to this dot handle click dot bind and i'm going to bind this to the handle click method let's test it again if i click on hello there is no error at all the last step is gonna be using state and is toggle on in the button caption get rid of hello and check this dot state dot is toggle on if it's true show on as a button caption otherwise use off save and test it by default it's on because in the constructor we set is toggle on to true if i click on it it's gonna get off let's open component here and click on toggle button here the state is false if i click on it is toggle on is gonna get true and we have on here great that's it about mixing handling events and states in a react component as an alternative for binding this to an event we can use experimental public class field syntax 
and it's like this convert handle click to this style use equal sign and it's gonna be like a arrow function by having this there is no need to bind event let's save it and test it as you see it works without error so we are going to use this style with because it's simpler and there is no need to have extra line of code here okay this time i'm going to test passing arguments to event handler let's say in this button i'm going to pass an argument to the handle click how can i do that let's say i'm gonna pass some value does it work or not let's test it as you see we are getting this error because when you define a function calling not only the function name calling function using parentheses for an event it runs again and again and we will get maximum update tip accessed to fix this issue we need to use this style defining arrow function like this save it and test the result this one we don't get any error and if i click on on and off it works let's see if we get the parameter here i'm going to define console log e and let's click on it go to console and as you see we are getting the value what if if we want the event argument in the handle click we need to pass event here it's the event of this button and after the value i need to pass the event we need to have a change in the handle click set the first parameter for handle click to the value and it's gonna have some value here and change console log to console log value let's test it if i click on on i'm getting some value here so by having this change you can have access to the event parameter for button click inside the handle click if i click on on the first parameter is the event handler and second parameter is the value that I passed here. Great, that's it about this lesson. In this lesson we test, we create a toggle button component and inside that we created a toggle button that when we click on it, the state is gonna change from true to false and we will have on and off in the screen. Also, we have learned how to pass an argument to the event handler using this style. That's it about this lesson. Until next lesson, which is about conditional rendering. Bye-bye. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about conditional rendering. In React, you can create distinct components, then you can render only some of them depending on the state of your application. Let's test it. What I'm going to do is to go to src folder and create two components. The first one is user greeting.js. Inside that, just define a function user greeting as a component and a return heading one and it just says welcome back let's duplicate that and rename the second component to guest greeting for guest greeting rename user greeting to guest greeting and at the end export default guest greeting do the same for user greeting 
we need to export components to use them in other components like this okay what we did is to create two different components we are going to use one of them based on a condition in a parent component in another component so in the src it's time to create a new file and set file name to greeting.js inside this component define a function set the name of it to greeting this component accept props inside that we have an if condition if props dot is logged in it's a boolean value that is coming from the parent component of greeting if it's true then here i'm going to use a conditional rendering return which component the user greeting component use this style user greeting and select this one which points to src slash user greeting it gonna be imported automatically like this if it's not true user is not logged in return guest greeting guest greeting select this one to import it here don't forget it should be like a component usage great the greeting component need to be exported export default greeting and it's time to use it in the app component inside app get rid of toggle button from previous lesson and use greeting press tab to import greeting from greeting.js here and if we don't set anything let's see what we get i mean we don't set any parameter any attribute or props for greeting let's test the result refresh it aha uh -huh. we are getting welcome back but we shouldn't get welcome back let's see why if we check the guest greeting instead of welcome back we need to show another message ask user to sign up sign up that's it let's test the result aha uh -huh. here it says please sign up what does it mean it means that in the component we used greeting component and inside greeting the props that is logged in is undefined because we didn't set is logged in in the greeting when it's undefined this component will be rendered its conditional rendering and when this one rendered this message will be shown on the screen to use the use greeting component inside app.js we pass is logged in as a property let's test it uh -huh. this time we are getting welcome back also we can explicitly set equal to true both of them works but this one is more intuitive and easier and shorter great so what we did is to use if condition to render components based on a condition in the parent element also we can define element variables let's create two other components and see what does it mean inside src click new file and set file name to login button.js inside this define login button component and inside that return a button and for unclick i am going to call unclick on the parent component and close it and set it to login props is a parameter for login button component and at the end we need to export default login button good let's go for logout button duplicate this 
and I'll rename it to lockout button. Inside that component, change login to logout here, here, and here. And that's it. We created another component named logout button. It's time to create a stateful component that uses these components, login and logout. Right click, new file, and set file name to login control.js. It's another component that uses them. What I'm going to do here is to create a class based component. I can type class login component or I can type R C C, which stands for React Class Component. If you install ES7 React Redux GraphQL React Native Snippet, you will get this recommendation here by pressing R C C. Press Tab. Uh huh. Can you see that? You have 11 lines of code and it's the basics of a React class component for you instead of typing them manually. Let's define a constructor here that accepts props like always and call super props. After that, let's define state and the default value for state is is locked in and by default it's false we are going to define two methods the first one is handle login click i'm going to use this style for accessing to the this object inside the handle click inside that set state when user click on that on login click is logged in should be true. Let's duplicate this code. I'm using option shift arrow down to duplicate that. After select that part of code and change login to log out here and change it to false. When user click on log out button, this will run. Let's go for the render part. In the render part, I'm going to define an element variable. I'm using let instead of const because I'm going to update it and set the name of element to button and it doesn't have any value at first. And I'm gonna check state of is logged in. If it's true, the button is gonna be this component, a login button from src slash login button. It's get imported automatically and set on click with capital C handler to this one. Copy this and paste it here and close the component. Also use this before the name of a method inside the class. Save it. The else part, very similar to this one. I'm going to copy and paste it, but change login to logout here and logout here. For logout button, you can press control space to get the recommendation here and by clicking on it automatically import logout from dot slash logout button will be added in line three in this line we have the right button element so in the return part i'm gonna use the greeting component first from previous part imported like this as you see, I imported it here. And for the second one, I'm going to render button. Don't forget, you can render it like this because it's going to be rendered like BT, B U T T O N in the screen. But we are going to render the right element 
because it's some JavaScript variable, we need to wrap it inside curly bracket. And for greeting pass is login from state like this is login equal to this value. Great. And for this if condition, if locked in is true, we need to show logout button, not login button. So I'm going to cut it from here, move it here, logout, and move login button to the else condition. Then go to the app.js and get rid of greeting here and import login control. We need to import it. Let's import login control from dot slash login control. Let's test the result. Uh -huh. We are getting place sign in, click login. It says welcome back and it's log out. If we check the login control here, the is login as a state is true. If I click on it again, is login gets false. And can you check that? Greeting component login button. And by clicking on it, they are going to change to user greeting and logout button. It's conditional rendering. Great. Let's test inline F with logical and inside login control. And in the return part, I'm going to use this condition if props dot has new message is a variable from props. If it's true, then I'm going to render this h2. You have unread messages and it should be this dot props because we are in class component. Great. Let's go to the app.js and here if we check the result, there is no change in the UI. But if in the app.js I pass parameter has new message and set it to true, what do I get? Uh huh. You have new messages. If the left part is true, then it render the right part. Otherwise, it doesn't render anything at all. Let's go for the second way, which is gonna be inline if else with conditional operator. Let's define another props, this.props.credit. If it's greater than zero, I'm using inline if else with conditional operator. Then I'm going to render h3 and enter this message you have and enter this dot props dot credit credit. But what if it's false? I mean, this condition is false and credit is zero. I'm going to render another h3 and it says you have no credit and save it to format your code. And let's check the results. Uh -huh. We are getting you have no credit. Why do we get this? Because this.props.credit is undefined. And when it's undefined, it's not greater than zero. And then this condition gets true and it's going to be rendered on the screen. If we go to the app.js and set credit to let's say 100, don't forget to pass number, you need to wrap them inside curly bracket, you cannot use double code. Save it. Good, you have 100 credits. That's it about inline if else with conditional operator. As a last part of this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can prevent a component from rendering. Let's say in the login screen, I'm going to have another 
props the start prop start has warning it shows warnings in the screen if it's true i'm going to render h4 you have warning and if it's false i'm going to show nothing to show nothing use null let's go to app.js and here refresh the page you see nothing here because it's null but if i set has warning to true what do i get i'm getting you have warning so to prevent a component from rendering you can use null as a return value for that component okay that's it about this lesson let's review what we did in this lesson this is this lesson was about conditional rendering at the very beginning of this lesson we created greeting component and in the greeting component if we have used an if condition if the is logged in is true we define separate component based on the props dot based on a condition from parent component also we created logging control and inside that we have used element variables and based on a condition we set different react elements to react components to an element to a variable and we have rendered that like this in the screen also we tested logical and rendering inline if else rendering and also preventing rendering an element using null that's it about this lesson. Until next lesson. Bye-bye. This lesson is about rendering multiple components. We can build collections of components and include them in JSX using curly braces. Let's see how. Inside src component, right-click and click new file. We are going to create a component named number list dot js what we're gonna do in this functional component is to define an array of numbers and it's an array let's say one two three four and we are going to render this numbers as a list item in the screen to do that we need to use map function or map method of array i'm going to define list items but instead of defining a simple li like this i'm going to define an arrays of li so get rid of it use numbers array and use map function map function accept number as a parameter and return li and inside each li i'm going to render the number so map function loop over this array one two three four and for each item return li1 li2 li3 and li4 the last thing that we need to do is to wrap list item inside a ul return ul and inside ul i'm going to render list item because it's a variable we need to use curly braces let's set the function a name and the name of this function is component name which is number list save it and export it export default number list great so what we did in this component is to define numbers array we have used map function on numbers array to convert each number to li element and we return that JSX elements inside a UL and we return it as a 
result of this component. Let's use it. Go to app.js and get rid of this one, which is about previous lesson and use number list this one. Click on it to import it automatically and close it. Save and run the project npm start. If you already run it, just open your web browser at port localhost column 3000. Uh -huh. Can you see that? We converted each item to unordered list. Let's right click, click on inspect and go to component. If you don't have this tabs in the developer tools, you need to install React Dev Tools in the Chrome extension store. Okay, let's check that we have app component as a parent inside that we have numbered list and inside numbered list we have used an array to render one, two, three, four to this format. Let's check the console here. What do we get here? It says each child in a list should have a unique key prop. Keys help React identify which item have changed or added or are removed. So key should be given to the elements inside the array to give the element a stable identity. Let's do that to fix this warning. Go to numbered list. The place that you need to set a key is inside map function. Inside the function inside map, find the first element, which is li, and as an attribute, set key. And the value of this key is very important. It should be a unique number. If you check the numbers in this array, they are unique. So I can use number here to make them unique. Let's check again to make sure that there is no warning at all. Uh -huh. As you see, we don't have any warning and it just fixed. Here the, there is a question. Let's see we have duplicate number. So we can't use number as a key. Let's see what happens if we have duplicate numbers. Can you see this? It says encounter two child with the same key two. So we need to fix this. In this situation, the best way to get rid of it is to set the second parameter for map function, which is the index of array. It will start from 0 to 1, 2, and etc. Instead of key as a number, I'm using index as a key. Save it to format your code and let's check the result. Refresh. Uh -huh. There is no warning and the data in the screen is the array that we have here. But it's not a good practice at all. Try to have a unique ID in the array and use that unique ID instead of index because in terms of performance, it's not efficient. We can make this component simpler by moving map function inside the JSX. So instead of having list element as a variable, I can move this whole expression, cut it from here, and replace it with the list item here and get rid of list item at all. Save your file and here is the new result. We just moved the map function on numbers to the JSX directly. It makes your code simpler and easy to read. Save and check the result to make sure that it works. Great. For the numbered list here, we can use props as a source of array. Instead of defining a static array here, we can use props. So props dot numbers and cut it from here. So this component render any list of items for us. Let's go to the app.js and define a variable here, const 
numbers and it can be any numbers that we like and then pass numbers like this numbers let's check the result uh -huh. you see it renders numbers like this for us also we can pass a string too and let's see what we have uh -huh. it renders numbers and strings for us by having unique numbers we can go to numbered list and instead of using index we can use number let's get rid of index here and inside the app.js i'm going to duplicate numbers array and make it numbers two and have some changes in the values only for this one and this one but still we have same values in two arrays if i duplicate numbered list and use numbers two let's see what we have we are going to render this array and this array and convert them to numbered list uh -huh. here we have two lists but some values are same like 56 if i refresh i will not get any warning at all because keys must be unique among siblings not globally in this list there is no duplicate numbers and in this list there is no duplicate numbers so having the du duplicate value between two lists is not a warning or is not an issue for react as a last part of this lesson we can render arrays of objects as well as arrays of numbers or a string let's define to do's and it has an id let's say one a name and is done is false let's define another one id two name walking and is done is true put opening bracket for this object and save it okay here i have to do's it's an arrays of objects i'm going to render to do's i can directly render it here by creating a query braces enter array name and use map function for each to do item inside to do's i'm going to render an li and inside li create a query bracket and enter to do dot name also we can create a dash and if it's done just enter done i check to do dot is done and if it's true render done otherwise render nothing that's it and we need to wrap li's inside a ul create a parent ul and move to do's inside that ul let's check the result refresh it uh -huh. coding and walking we are getting this message a child in a list should have a unique key let's fix it for the element right after map which is li define key and what would be the value for the key if you check the to do's we have id that are unique so we need to type to do dot id that's the correct way of defining keys for items in the map function let's check the result to make sure that there is no error at all great so i have coding and i have walking which is done that's it about this lesson until next lesson which is about forms bye bye In this lesson, we are going to create input forms using React. What we're gonna do here is to create a simple component. Let's create that and enter this component to 
user form.js. In this form, we are going to get user information like name. Let's create the component body function user form. And what I'm going to return is a simple form like what we create in regular HTML documents. It's a form. There is a dev and create a label. Inside the label, we are going to get the username. And inside the label, we have an input. Type of input is text. And the name of it is user name. At the end, create a button. Set type of button to submit. And the caption to submit. Save it to format your code and at the end export the default user form. Let's show this form in the screen. To do that, go to app.js, get rid of content inside dev because they are about previous lessons, and enter user form. We are going to render user form here press tab to import it and close user form also get rid of numbers here we have user form let's see the result here there is a simple form and here we have a name input box let's enter john and click on submit here is the result it redirects user to question mark user name equal to John. But the thing is, that's not what we want. We don't like to have a refresh post back. We are going to handle form submit in the front end side, not post the form to the back end. We are going to convert this input box to a controlled component. What is a controlled component? Let's convert this input box to a controlled component. Input elements maintain their own state and update it based on user input. In React, mutable state, like an input box, is typically kept in state property of component and only update with set state. So if we want to convert this form to a React form and using controlled component, what we need to do is to convert the function component to class component. Let's convert it. Class user form extends react dot component. Inside that, create render function and move return to render function. Next step is gonna be defining constructor. It accept props and we call super props at the beginning and define state equal to username by default is empty string because we have only one input and the name of input is username we define the state with username and the default value is empty string here we need to set value and value is gonna be equal to this.state.username. So by default, the value of username should be empty string. Let's save it to format your input box. And the next step is gonna be handling change value in the input box, define unchange. For unchange, we are going to define handle change handle change should be a function or a method in user form class and it accepts event as a parameter and from event we are going to get the value that user entered i mean we are going to set 
state for user name to the value that user entered its event dot target dot value as we saw in previous lessons to access this in a method we need to convert handle change to this style equal to and use arrow function access to the this that refer to user form component the next step is gonna be handling form on submit let's define handle submit handle submit and use this so the next event that we need to implement is handle submit like previous event we're using this style and what we're gonna do is to just alert user name equal to use plus to concatenate it with this dot state dot username don't forget we need to define event here and use event dot prevent default to prevent post back and refreshing this page save it and let's check the results as you see by default is empty i enter john and click on submit can you see this username equal to john let's go to the home page and press enter by clicking on submit there is no refresh in the page and it shows username and in this case it's empty string if i enter let's say jane and click on submit the submit function will run and username equal to jane will be shown here great we implemented a very simple form and we have used controlled component for this input box and we have access to the value that user enter in the input box and in the handle submit we use that value which is saved in the state of this component to show an alert to the user let's try text area tag we are going to get user description let's define another label inside this label let's get user information like description and define text area for text area in regular html we enter the value between opening and closing tag but in react it's different we need to use value to enter data in the text area so it should be this dot state dot description and for description inside the constructor the default value for description is empty string you can make it whatever you like good for the description field we need to have on change and it's gonna be handle this description change put this before that and copy handle description change scroll up and right after handle change define handle description change and define event here what we're gonna do here is to update state based on the data that user enter in the text area field so this dot set state should be equal to description equal to event dot target dot value event dot target dot value is the latest data that user entered in the text area field in the handle submit what i'm gonna do is to use plus use slash n to create a new line in the alert and enter description and use plus to show 
this dot state dot description save it format and let's check the results aha uh -huh. here we have two field let's wrap the first label in a div and create a new div wrap the second one in a closing div and create another div and for the last one use this div so what i did is to wrap each labels inside a div and also the button the submit button let's check the result aha uh -huh, it's much better and let's test it i enter john and for description it doesn't work if i try to type it doesn't work let's go to code and for handle description fix the typo here Descript, description and let's test it john and hello and click on submit what do we get username john and description is hello so by following this pattern you can create as many as fields like input box and text area let's go for the third important input data in html which is a select tag i'm going to create that right before description create a div and inside div define a select tag and inside the select tag we have three options the first one is choose second one is value mail and the third one is value female wrap the select in a label and the label is gender move select inside label and save it good let's check the result aha uh -huh. here we have name gender and description but it doesn't work i mean the select box does not work to make it work we need to have value in the select box and the value is this dot state dot gender and let's set the default value for gender in the constructor gender is undefined or is empty string I scroll down find the gender select box and define on change and for on change the handler function is this dot handle gender change copy this and scroll up and right after handle description change define handle gender change we are going to use the previous pattern to update component state using this dot set state and set gender equal to event dot target dot value and to make sure that we are setting correct gender i'm going to show that in the alert box when user click on submit button slash n to create a new line gender colon and equal to this dot state dot gender save it and let's check the results enter john mail great and click on submit can you see this username is john description is great and gender is male what i'm gonna do here is to add the last element which is a checkbox right after description create a new div and create a label define input and set type to checkbox also set name to accept terms 
right before the input set accept terms and let's check the result uh-huh here we have accept terms as a checkbox but it does not work like before input boxes we need to handle value and unchange here for the checkbox instead of setting value we need to set checked and the checked is a boolean value the start state dot accept terms and by default we need to set accept terms in the state to false I scroll up to find the state in the constructor and set accept terms to false by setting to false by default this checkbox will be unchecked save it to format and define on change for on change i'm going to define handle accept terms change put this before that and copy the method name and right after handle gender change create an event and inside that event use this dot set a state and set accept terms to event dot target dot this time it's not value it's checked because it's an input box and there is no value here we have checked which is true or false based on the user click save it and go to the submit handler to add this data to the form too it's gonna be accept terms equal to this dot state dot accept terms and use plus here and save it let's check the result i'm going to enter full data accept terms checked and submit can you see the result we have all entered data in a javascript function in handle submit like john great mail and accept terms true let's improve this code by defining one single function to handle all fields instead of having a new function for each input box we are going to use one single function to handle changes in all fields to do that we are going to use es6 computed property name so what i'm gonna do is to update handle change for the username and make it general instead of getting username i'm going to get event dot target dot name event dot target dot name points to the name attribute in an input box so for this one it works because username will be replaced with this and username in the state will change to the entered value let's set name for gender to work for gender 2 set name for text area its description with small d and for checkbox we already have accept terms as a name attribute but because it's checkbox we need to have a small fix in the handle change and it's gonna be checking event.target.type so if event dot target dot type is equal to checkbox then instead of setting event dot target that value we need to set event dot target dot checked because it's a checkbox otherwise use event dot target dot value let's save to create this expression in a formatted way 
And what we do here is to compare type of input box with checkbox. If it's checkbox, use checked attribute, otherwise use value attribute. And the last step is gonna be removing all handle changes. So we need to change unchange method for select box to handle change for text area to handle change and checkbox to handle change. We are using one single event handler for all fields in the screen and it makes our code very simpler and smaller. Let's test it if it works. John, mail, test, accept and submit. What do we get? Username is OK, description is test, gender is male, and accept terms is true. And it means that it works perfectly. Great, we implemented a very simple input form in the screen. And we, here is the result. We can add some CSS style to make it much better in terms of design. So what I'm going to do is to go to index.css, it's here in this RC folder. And for form, let's set a width to 400 pixel, set margin to 50 pixel and auto, and create a border 2 pixel black and solid and create padding like 20 pixel and for the direct children of form which are devs set margin to 20 pixel by having this simple style we have this result which is much better in terms of ui and it works too Great, that's it about this lesson. We created a very simple form that gets data from user through text input box, select box, text area, and checkbox. Until next lesson, bye-bye. In this section, we are going to put main concepts of React into action by creating a to-dos app using React. Here is the final version of this app. What we can do by this app is to create new task like running and by pressing enter or clicking on add, a new row will be added and it shows the new task. You can set a task as a completed by clicking on the checkbox or by clicking on the task name and also you can uncheck it by clicking again on the task. Also you can edit a task like this and save it and also you will be able to delete a task. That's the app that we are going to build together and in this app, what we're gonna learn is all the concepts that you have learned in previous lessons, like using components, creating components, defining states, using props, defining subcomponents inside a parent component, passing data and methods to the child component, like this one using map function to render a list of elements and also creating forms like this to get input data from users. In this lesson, you will learn all the concepts that we have learned in previous lessons like handling event, conditional rendering, rendering list, creating input form, managing states and lifecycle methods in one single app in less than one hour. If you are ready, let's open your VS Code and go for the next lesson. Here is the plan to create Todo's app. First of all, we are going to create a new React application, open VS Code, and from terminal menu, click 
new terminal and enter the command for creating new app first of all i'm going to go to the desktop folder and enter npx create dash react dash app and the name of folder of this application is gonna be react dash to do dash app press enter to create react application in desktop folder after creating app go to the app folder react to the app and type code and put a dot and dot points to the react to do app folder by running this command a new vs code window will open so let us start working on this window instead of previous one so you can close this and what we're gonna do in this react application first of all is running the app open a new terminal and run npm start because i'm in the react to do app folder after running npm start a new tab in your google chrome will open and you will have this react application we are going to convert this to to do app the first step is gonna be creating the main component right click in src create a folder for components and inside that right click new file and set file name to main.js name of component should start with capital letter let us start by creating main component class main extends react.component so we need to import react from react next command is gonna be defining constructor and it accept props and we need to call super props the next command is defining the initial state of main component and we have tasks list of tasks and by default we are going to make it an empty array put semicolon and save it let's go for the next method which is render render function I'm going to return a div and inside div put an h1 set the name to to do's and create another div and inside that what we're gonna do is to create two components the first one is create task component and create a new line and the next component is task list component so the main component contains two other components as a child and we need to implement them so we are breaking down a bigger component to a smaller one let's go for create task from explorer in the components right click new file and set file name to create task.js to create a class based component here instead of typing them directly you can type rcc which stands for react class component and press tab automatically you will have a component named create task and instead of exporting in a new line it export directly the class so we can use this style in the main and directly export default main component save it and go to create task and save it too i'm going to just enter create task here 
and let's create and let's import it here click on create task press control space to get this recommendation this one it points to src slash components slash create task and click on it to import it like this save do the same for task list right click components new file task list.js type rcc and press tab to create task list component here then go to the main and press control space press enter to import task list from dot slash task list save it and go to task list and enter task list here good next step open app.js and get rid of sample data here and enter main component imported by pressing tab and you will have main component in the app component save it and let's check the result aha uh -huh. here we have to do's heading one create task component and task list component i'm going to right click select inspect and go to components to see the structure of this react application app is the parent component it has main as a child and main has create task and task list as a child too that's it about this lesson let's go for next lesson which is create task for create task component what we're gonna do is to define a constructor that accept props inside that we have to call super props and inside that set state to task this state is gonna save the task that user entered in the text box great next step is in the render in the render we need to define a form because we are going to get a new task from user define a form on submit should be submit handler should be handle submit function we need to define this later and we need to use this before that inside this form define an input box set type of input to text and place holder to enter task set value attribute to this dot state dot task it points to this variable and on change to this dot handle change also enable autofocus attribute and by having this attribute when you open the application this input box will have focus after that it's time to create a button a submit button so set type of button to submit and the name of button is add because we are going to add a task save your form and here is the structure of create task component let's check the result uh -huh. can you see this we have enter task if we enter characters it doesn't work we need to implement handle change scroll up right before render define handle change equal to i'm using this structure to access to the class component instance using this 
And what I'm gonna do is to update state based on the data that user entered in the text box. To access the entered data in the text box, we need to define event as a parameter for handle change and update task with event dot target dot value. Good. This time, entering character will work. But if I click on add, it refresh the page and it doesn't do anything. It's time to work on handle submit. Define handle submit equal to it accept events two. And inside this function, first of all, we need to call event dot prevent default. By having this line, this page will not refresh by clicking on add button. Next step is gonna be creating a task. The create task should run in the parent component because the list of tasks shouldn't be in this component. It should be in the parent component to share the list of tasks between the childs. So what I need to do is to call create task on props and props means the parent component. This dot props dot create task. And what I'm gonna pass is the entered value in the input box. It's this dot state dot task. After that, we need to clear text box. Set a state, set task to empty a string. Save. If we check, if we run this app and enter, let's say test and click on add, we should get an error. And the error is this.props.createTask is not a function. Let's create that function. What is the parent of create task? We need to create function in the parent of create task. For sure, it's main because in the main, we have defined create task as a child in the render function. Let's define create task here. Create task equal to this function. It accepts task as a parameter. And if task.trim equal to empty string, we alert task can't be empty. Let's put backslash here to use single code in the string and return. So if task is empty, we will not add it to the list. And the trim remove spaces around task string. If everything is okay and we have task, we have a value in the task, then what we need to do is to update tasks and for task push this element, the task itself and is completed to false. So each task has two attributes, the name of tax or the content of task and the boolean attribute that shows if it's completed or not. By default, a new task is not completed. Put a semicolon here and it's time to define tasks here. Out of the component, define tasks as a empty array. I'm going to use this task inside the constructor instead of setting task inside state use the task that we entered with the find out of the component then in the create task after pushing the new task to the list of tasks here to reflect the change in the ui we need to update the state too 
To update the state, we use this dot, set a state, and set tasks to the tasks that we have defined out of the component. The reason that we have defined two tasks inside and outside of the component is to use local storage to fetch previous tasks in the application. That's the topic of next lessons. Okay, we created create task inside the main component and it's time to pass this function to create task component. That's the way to do that. Create task equal to and copy this and paste it here and use this before that. Great, let's check the result. Enter test and click on add. This time there is no error. Let's say I enter task here and click on add. As you see, there is no error. But the thing is, we cannot see any change in the screen. But if you go to component and click on main, you will see that we have a state here. And inside a state, there are two tasks there. Let's add another one and press enter. Can you see this? We have task here and here is the data of task, new task and is completed is false. Great, what we did in this lesson is to implement create task component and by adding a new task, we have the new task inside main component as a state. That's it about this lesson. Let's go for the next lesson, which is task list. For the task list component, what we need to do is to create a table in the render function. Get rid of div and create a table. Inside table, define table head and define table row inside that. And the first cell in the table head is task and second cell is actions. After that, create table body. And inside table body, what I'm gonna do is to access to the list of tasks from the parent component. And to access to parent component, we need to use this dot props. Inside that, access to tasks and use map function to convert each task and the index of that tax to this component. Here I'm gonna use task item, which is a new component that I need to create. Set key of this component to index to prevent warning and pass task to this component using this code and set an ID to task item as an index of array in the task array. That's it. And let's define task item. From RC components, right click new file and set the name to task item.js type rcc, press tab to create task item. And inside that, we need to have table row and two column, first TD and second TD. The first TD is gonna have this dot props dot task dot task. To having duplicate task, what I'm gonna do is to go to the task list and rename this to task item. And then inside the task item, make it task item dot task. And the second one is gonna be action. Just put a button and for edit and for delete. In the task list component, we need to import task item like this. 
And also we need to go to main component and pass tasks to task list component. Tasks equal to this dot state dot tasks. Good. Let's check the results here. Enter task walking and press enter. Aha. Uh -huh. We have walking as a new task here. Reading book. Great. We implemented a very simple task list here. That's it about the task list lesson. And for the next lesson, we are going to implement delete capability. Let's go for it. To implement delete function, what we need to do is to define a new method is to define an event handler for delete. Let's implement that on click equal to this dot delete task. And we need to define delete task here. Delete task equal to this arrow function. And to implement delete, we just pass this responsibility to the parent. So in the parent, we need to define delete task and pass this dot props dot id which is the id or index of this task in the tasks array in main component let's define delete task in the main in the parent component of task item which is main and here i'm going to define delete task the parameter is task id and inside this function what we need to do to delete a task is using tasks.splice function. It accepts two parameters. The first parameter is the starting point to delete, and it's the index of task ID. And second one is the delete count. We are going to just delete this task, so it's going to be one and then update the state based on the new task. That's it. Let's check it. Add a new task and click on delete. We are getting this error, this.props.delete task is not a function. Let's fix it. In the task list, we need to pass delete task as a props to task list. It's going to be like this. Check it again. Enter a task and click on delete. We're still getting error because we need to pass delete task in the task list to task item. It should be delete task equal to this dot props dot delete task. So it's very important. We are going to pass a function from parent to child and from child to the inner child. That's the way to do that. Let's test it. Enter test and click on delete. Yes, it works. Great. We implemented delete functionality for to-dos app and it's time to go for edit capability edit is a bit tricky because we need to have two states for task item components because it's a state we need to define a constructor that accept props we pass super props and let's define the state. In the state, we have task, which is coming from props, task item dot task. Because by default, when we are going to edit 
a task issued has the previous value of the task which is this and is editing by default it's false the next step is going to be defining set editing state and it accept is editing as a parameter and update a state based on the is editing so having is editing only here it means that we are using this code it's the shorter version of this code which update is editing in the state based on the is editing that user entered good let's go to the render function and inside that what i need to do is to define a conditional rendering if this dot state dot is editing is true i need to render two tds because it's two component next to each other i need to use a wrapper like this by having this empty wrapper i can put multiple component next to each other the first dev is gonna show a form and in this form i get input and the value of this input is this dot state dot task and for unchange it's this dot handle change Also, it's autofocus too. Next to that input, for the second column, define a button, and the button is save, and the next button is back or cancel. That's for the is editing to true, and for is editing to false i need to put column here and create an empty container like before and cut this td and paste it here so if is editing is false i show the task name and edit and delete button and when user click on edit i'm going to show this so i need to implement and click here and for unclick on edit button what we need to do is to define a function its inline function and set is editing to true by clicking on this set is editing will run with true as a parameter and this is gonna make is editing to true and change the state of is editing to true it's gonna make this state to true and instead of rendering this part react will render this part and shows a form let's test it enter a task and click on edit aha uh -huh. this row has been changed to edit mode and it has save and back button if i enter another task the other tasks will work can you see this but typing characters will not work here let's fix it we need to implement handle change handle change equal to this function this dot set state task equal to event.target.value let's pass event as a parameter of handle change the next step is gonna be implementing on submit on submit should be this dot handle submit and in the handle submit function we need to pass event 
and call event dot prevent default to prevent refreshing the page and call edit task on the parent component using this dot props dot edit task what we need to pass is the id of this task or the index of this task in the tasks array it's this dot props dot id you know it's coming from here in the task list we have passed the index of array as an id to the task item so in the task item i can access to that using this dot props dot id and the second parameter is the new value for the task which is this dot state dot task that's it save and after running, after editing, it's time to update is editing state to false. Good. Let's implement back button here. For this one, I'm going to set type to submit and for the back button set type of button to button so when user click on save button submit will run but when user click on back button we need to handle it manually what i'm gonna do here is to this dot set edit state to false good Let's test it, enter a task and click on edit. Make it test one and press enter. We are getting this error. It says this.props.edit task is not a function. Let's fix it. What I'm gonna do to fix this issue is to go to the main and implement edit task here. Edit task ask, accept two parameter, the task ID and the task which contains the new value for that task. Define task item and fetch the task from the array. And then from task item, update the task based on the task that we passed to edit task and then set a state tasks to tasks that's it about edit task in the main component and it's time to pass it to task list component using this code then go to task list like what we did for delete task for edit task we need to pass it from props to the child component which is task item inside task item and in the handle submit we have called edit task in the parent which refers to the main component let's test it test edit test one and press enter yeah it get changed if we click edit and click on save button it does not work let's fix it in the task item for the button here for the save button it's outside of the form so we need to implement unclick here and call handle submit click on it and let's check it click edit make it two and click on save this time it works good we implemented edit task in this lesson and for the next lesson we are going to put a checkbox before task to make it done or undone 
To implement toggle task changing the state from done to undone, what I'm going to do is to define a function here right before delete task toggle task. And for toggle task, we call toggle task from parent component and we pass the ID of current task to the parent component. Let's go to the main component and right before delete, define toggle task here. The parameter is task ID. And what we need to do here is to get access to the task item from tasks like this and then update the state of is completed for the task item to the reverse state of current state so logical not of is completed so if task is completed is true the new state should be false and vice versa after that it's time to update state tasks equal to tasks save it and that's about toggle task. We need to pass it as a parameter to the child function. And inside the task list, we need to pass it as a parameter to the task list item. Let's save main. And inside task item, it's time to use toggle task. Where is the location to use it? It's he, right here. Define on click. And when user click on the task name, it should run toggle task. Also inside that, I'm going to define a input of type checkbox and make it read only because it's not gonna change the parent element will handle updating the state and the checked state is coming from this dot props dot task item dot is complete it and close it. Also wrap the task inside an span like this, move this inside a span. And for a span, define a CSS class using class name attribute. And if this Boolean value is completed is true set the class name to completed otherwise to not completed to set an a style like line through for the task name open index.css and at the very end define completed and set text decoration to line through. Let's check the result. Enter a task and we are getting this error. It says there is a type on input. Go to task item and change it to input. Uh -huh. This time we have a checkbox. If I click on it, yeah. The task is done. The click on the task name itself works too. And to make it like a button instead of 
having text icon what we can do is to set a class for the TD here class name to task and inside index.css for task set cursor to pointer by having this if you move mouse over it it's like a pointer like a pointer great we implemented the is done and undone capability let's add multiple tasks and if i click on some of them they are going to be completed or incompleted edit functionality fork two and delete two great we implemented the toggle task capability in this lesson and for the next lesson we are going to work on css style and making the style much better for the style first of all we are going to define a main class and set margin to zero auto to make it center aligned the main component and set max width to 500 pixel let's add this class to main and in the class name for the parent dev for the child dev here set class name to content go to index.css and right after main class define content class and first of all define a border like 5 pixel thickness and the color is C0C0FF light blue and solid define border radius like 5 pixel make font size a bit bigger 20 pixel and set a background color to light gray f0 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 and create a padding like 20 pixel let's check the results aha uh -huh, much better let's go for the table i'm going to add task one task two and i'm gonna make the table full width to do that after the content for the table element set width to a hundred percent for td i mean the first column first child set width full width and for the last child td last child define a minimum width of one two five pixel also for th we need to set text align to left because by default it's center aligned and for alternative row for even rows set background color to a different color i'm going to make it white that's it about the table let's check the result yes it's much better now and the next step of styling is for input and button what i'm gonna do for input and button let's fix the typo for input is increasing font size to 20 pixel padding to 5 pixel border radius 
to 5 pixel 2 and create a border of 2 pixel gray and solid. Also for button set cursor to pointer. Yeah, here is the result. And if I enter a task, it's gonna be like this. Good. Next step is gonna be setting color for add, edit, and delete. For button.add set background color to blue, it's gonna be 0080FF and color is white. Copy this for edit, delete, save and back. So rename it edit, delete, save and back. For edit, use this code. Oops. Put hashtag before them. Hashtag before all of them. For delete, use red this code. Save green this code. And for back gray. And then go to the create task, set class for the button to add, go to task item, set class for save button, class name to save, for back, class name to back, for the next two buttons, edit, class name to edit, and for delete class name to delete save and yeah here is the styled to do app and it works perfect can you see save and back that's it about the styling and the last part of this lesson is saving data in the local storage for saving data in the local storage, what's the problem? Here we have a list of tasks, and if I refresh, all of them will be gone. And that's not what, I, what we want. We are going to keep them in the local storage, and after refreshing the page and reopening this app, we are going to have our previous task in the list. Let's implement this feature together. In the task, at the very top of the screen, out of the component, we are going to use local storage dot get item tasks. If we already have task in the local storage, then use JSON dot parse and then pass this to json.parse function. json.parse function convert a string to JavaScript objects. If there is no value for task in the local storage, the default task is gonna be empty array. That's it about fetching task from local storage. Local storage is a storage to save temporary data in the, in the client side, in the front end side. Good. We need to update the local storage using local storage that set item. Where do we need to update it? The first place is in create task. And after and after setting state, we need to call local storage dot set item for tasks and it's gonna be json dot stringify task why do i use j 
json.stringify because task is an array is a javascript variable and local storage only save data as a string i'm using this function to convert this array to a string to be able to save it in the local storage copy this and paste it for all places that we have changed task that's it let's test it enter a task enter another task and refresh the page also we can close it and open it again localhost 3000 and as you see we have our task here if we have any change to the task and refresh the page we still have the updated change in the tasks great that's it about to do apps what we did together is to implement a very simple react application and we have used a lot of features of react like decomposing component state props setting css style working with local storage defining method passing method to and props passing data and props to child component and handling to the event in the child component in parent component and a lot of main a lot of react concept have been discussed in this react application you can improve this by adding animation by saving data in a backend api and you can make this app much much better until next lesson bye bye in this lesson we are going to learn hooks hooks are a new addition to the react that let you use state and lifecycle methods inside functional components let's see how we are going to create a new react application in the desktop go to desktop and npx create react app set the app name to react advanced app after creating the app from file menu click add folder to workspace go to desktop react advanced app and click on add here we have folder structure and then click on plus icon to create a new terminal inside react advanced app folder type npm start to run the application after running the application what we are going to do is to create a new component named counter and it's gonna have a button and when we click on it it increase the counter right click new file and set file name to counter.js we are going to implement this using class component and use a state there and then we will convert it to functional component using hook that's the way that we are going to learn hook type rcc tab to create a react class component named counter and define constructor props call super props and then let's set the state to count and default value to zero also we are going to define increase function and in this function what we're gonna do is to increase count using this dot set state and it accept a state as a parameter and return count state dot count plus one wrap it inside a pair of parentheses to return this object as a new state save it to format your code and inside the div create a paragraph show the value of count you clicked to show the value use this dot state dot count times and then put a button there click me 
and set on click event for this button it's gonna call increase function this dot increase save your file go to explorer open app.js instead of this content remove them with counter from src slash counter and import it here save your file and let's check the result aha uh -huh, it works counter is an example of a component that uses a state we are going to implement counter using functional component instead of class component using hook right click on src and we are going to create a new version of counter click on new file set it to new counter.js this component is functional component type rfc to find react functional component code a snippet to get new counter if you don't have this recommendation you just need to go to extension and search for es7 react redux here and click on install button we are going to convert counter to new counter using functional component as i said before to have a state in a functional component we need to use hook here is the first hook that we are going to use and it's a state hook type const and then put a square bracket the first element is the state which is count and second element is a function that update count which is set count and it's equal to use a state use a state is a function inside react package so select this one to import it from react and put a parenthesis because it's a state the parameter for use a state is the initial value for count i'm going to set it to zero because by default count should be zero that's the way we define a hook let's use it i'm going to create a paragraph here and enter the message you clicked instead of this dot state dot count i just enter count times that's the first difference and to update the button button click me for on change i'm going to define this function increase and let's define increase function like this i'm going to update the count set count should be count plus one don't use plus plus here because the only way to update the value of count is set count function and for this button set on click to only increase function so when you click on it increase will run and it update count to count plus one save it let's use new counter in app.js wrap the counter inside a div and create new counter component imported from new counter and save it to format your code let's check the result we have two components the first one is a counter with class component and second one is a counter with functional component as you see in this component we have a state and without defining a class component we implemented state using a state hook so in this line use a state is a hook that lets you add react state to functional component so when would i use a hook if you write a function and realize you need to add some state to it previously you had to convert it to class component but now 
you can use a hook inside the existing functional component. Let's see what a square bracket means here. This JavaScript syntax is called array deconstructing. It means that we are making two new variables from the output of useHook. useHook returns an array and the first element of this array is a variable and the second one is a function that update this variable. Let's improve this component by adding a default value for click. I'm going to add a label and enter previous clicks and put an input box. Set type to text and value to previous clicks and unchange. For unchange, I'm going to define input change function. As you see, I don't use this here because it's a function, not a class. Let's define previous clicks as a hook. Const, that's the way we define a state hook. Previous clicks and set previous clicks equal to use state and by default it's zero two. It's time to define input function const input change function. It accepts event as a parameter because it's inside an input box. And what I need to do is to update previous clicks with event.target.value set previous clicks equal to event dot target dot value here event dot target dot value is a string and previous click is a number so we need to use number function to convert this string to number and then save it inside previous click variable. To reflect previous click on the count here, we need to sum count with previous click. It should be like this previous click plus count. Let's check the result. I'm going to set previous click to let's say 50. Uh -huh. Can you see that? By typing 50, it says you click 50 times. And if I click on increase, click me button, it's going to increase it. So it's possible to use multiple state hooks in a component. And as you see, we have defined count and previous click to state hooks inside this component. And we have used them here. That's all about state hooks and for the next session we are going to work on effect hooks to hook into lifecycle method in a component until that lesson bye bye this lesson is about effect hooks effect hooks enable you to use effects and lifecycle methods in functional components like previous lesson, we are going to test them on a class component and then convert the class component to functional component and use effect hooks there. Go to Explorer, right click in SRC and create a new file. The name of this file is user info.js. What I'm going to do in this component is to fetch data from a server and show that on the screen. For data, we are going to use JSON placeholder API. And here is a sample code to fetch data from there. First of all, we need to create a class-based component type RCC. And let's define a constructor called super props and let's define state here 
the state is user and by default it's an empty object and in the render function we are going to show user information user info a new line and name is gonna be coming from this dot state dot user this dot state dot user dot name and save it also we can duplicate this line and get email too we are going to get user info from this address to send an ajax request to the backend and get data from backend and show them in the front end in react we need to do this task in component did mount component did mount is a special method in a class component that will run after rendering your component into dom to fetch data from backend we are going to use this sample code it's fetch method and the address is gonna be this json place older dot code.com slash user slash one and then you return a promise so we need to have then here and convert the response to response dot json function it convert the string to javascript object and in the second then we can get data and inside this function what i'm gonna do is to update the state this dot set a state and set user to the data from backend save your code and let's use user info inside app.js get rid of counter and new counter and type user info press tab to import it and close user info save and let's check the result yes here we are getting this data user info name and email in the user info component you can type a break line to have name and email in separate lines let's review what we did in the user info component we have defined a life cycle method named component did mount and it's the place to run any effects like fetching data from backend or changing the document object model in this method we send an ajax request to this address and set the return data from this api to the state and show them in the screen we are going to implement this component using effect hooks and let's go for it right click in src new file and set file name to new user info dot js this component is functional so i type rfc tab to create a functional component and like what we have learned in previous lesson to have user as a state i need to define state hook user set user equal to use state and the default value for it is empty object let's import use a state from react and inside the dev user info create a new line name equal to user dot name another new line and email equal to user dot email save your code and go to app.js put new user 
info here and import it here. If we check the result, the new user info doesn't work. It doesn't show any data here because in the new user info, we need to use effect hook to mimic component that mount in this functional component. That's the way to do that. Type use effect, select this one to auto import it from react and it's a function. So put a pair of parentheses and the first parameter for use effect is a function. So define a function and this function will run on every render of your component. What I'm gonna do is to put the code for fetching data from backend here. Go to user info, copy the content of fetching data and paste it here. Also, we need to change this line because it's the class-based method to update the state, get rid of it and set user to data from backend. Save it and let's check the result. Great, it works. We have two user info component, the first one class-based and the second one is using effect hooks. So by using use effect, you tell React that your component needs to do something after render. React will remember the function you passed and call it later after performing the DOM updates. In this effect, we fetch data from backend and update the state based on the results. Let's see how many times use effects function runs. I'm going to put console log and enter use effect runs. Save it, open Chrome DevTools, and as you see, it gets increased again and again because we are updating the state in this line and but by updating the state, use effect function runs again and it creates an infinitive loop. To get rid of this loop and runs this only one time, we need to pass second parameter to use effect and its dependency list. It's an array and if you set the array to empty array like this, this function runs one time. Let's save it and check the result. Refresh. Can you see this? Use effect runs and it runs only one time. This code and this code are equal to each other, but this one is with the effect hook. Sometimes you want to do something on the end of rendering this component. To do that, we can define return in the use effect and return a function. Let's set console log clean up. It's clean up function. And if you have used any resources in the use effect, you can clean it up here. Let's save it and refresh the page. Use effect runs, but because the component is alive, it doesn't run clean up. If I have a change in the code and save it, you can see that the clean up runs because this component will be removed and a new render will run. On the remove of this component from the DOM, this line will run and you will see this log in the screen. So in any cases that you have occupied a resource in the use effect function, you can release that resource in this function. We are going to improve this example by having a text box and in the text box, we get the ID of user and fetch the information of that user from backend API. What I'm gonna do here is to have an input 
set type to text and value to user ID on change to user change. Let's define user ID as a state and set user ID. Use a state and the default value is one. For user change, before use effect, define user change as a function that accept event as a parameter and inside that we update user id based on the entered value in the text box oops it should be user id not user after having this change go to use effect and for fetch method instead of getting data for user one get the data for user user id use plus user id to concatenate user id to the api to create a new api a string save it and go to app.js and comment out the old user info and let's check the result if i enter two does it work no it doesn't reflect the user two data here What's the reason? In the new user info component and in the use effect, we have an empty array for dependency list. If we want to run this function on changing user ID, we need to put user ID in the dependency list. So whenever you change the user ID in the input box, the use effect function will run again and it fetch the data of the new user and update the user state. Save it and let's check the results. Enter three. Yeah. Can you see this? It runs use effect and also it runs cleanup. I mean, in every render, it runs this and the cleanup. Great, we implemented a very simple component that gets the ID of user. So we can change the user info to user ID. It better makes sense. And a class name to it like user and then go to index.css to create user class set width to 40 pixel margin to center padding color and border radius like 20 pixel by having user style and having class name user and here is the result great we implemented user info component and we have used effect hook to implement component did mount and component did update and also component will unmount. In this component, we fetch data from backend in the use effect and we show data in the screen. Also, we defined an input box and in the use effect, when there is a change in the state of input box, we rerun this function again and it updates the UI for us. That's it about this lesson. Until next lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to use context API to share data between components. When we want to share data between components, the only way is to use props. But when we have multiple level of components, Passing data using props can be tedious. To fix this issue, we use React context. In this lesson, we are going to create a theme context and it's gonna share the theme between all components. Let's create a new file inside SRC and set the file name to themecontext.js. Here we are going to create a context. To create a context, we are 
To create a context, we use react.createContext. React.createContext. CreateContext function return an object, and we are going to deconstruct this object to provider and consumer. So we use the constructing assignment syntax and from create context function, the return value of it get provider and consumer. Also, we need to import react from react. Good, we created the context and it has a provider and a consumer. The next step is gonna be creating theme context provider. Let's create a component, function, theme, context, provider. And in the return part of this, we are going to return provider and the value of provider is an object. The first query braces is to put JavaScript content and second one is a JavaScript object. The first parameter is theme and second parameter is set theme. Inside the provider render props dot children so we need to pass props as a parameter to theme context provider props dot children is a special variable that make it possible to use this component as a container and all content inside this component will be inserted here the next step is gonna be defining a state hook we can type use a state and select this a snippet and press tab. Then type theme, press tab and set the default value to light. It's gonna be light theme and import use a state from props. Good. It's time to export. I'm going to export an object. The first object is theme context provider. And second object is the consumer. I'm going to rename consumer to theme context consumer. Great. That's the syntax to create a context provider and a context consumer. In the provider, we defined a state to update the theme. And what I'm going to do here is to define a function toggle theme. In this function, set theme based on the current value of theme. If it's equal to light, then make it dark otherwise use light use toggle theme instead of set theme in the provider what i'm gonna pass to the child of provider is current theme which is light or dark and a function to change it next step is gonna be using this context right click on src and create a new file and set file name to layout.js it's a react functional component type rfc tab to create it and pass props as a parameter to this component here is the first usage of theme context consumer get rid of dev and type theme context consumer select this one to import it automatically from theme context and inside this, create a curry braces and define a function and pass context as a parameter to this function. What we will return is a JSX and inside 
JSX, the context has access to the theme and toggle theme. Let's create a div and context.theme is gonna show current theme, light or dark. Also create a button, toggle theme. And when user click on it, what I'm gonna do is to call context dot toggle theme. Save it and let's use layout. Go to app.js, get rid of content inside the return part and put layout imported from data slash layout and save it. If we check the result, we will see this error cannot read property of theme of undefined inside layout in this line. To fix this issue, we need to go to index.js and use context provider inside react dom dot render function. Get rid of react dot strict mode and type theme context provider this one. It's gonna be imported here and copy and paste it to close this component. Save it and let's check the result. Yeah, we have light and we have toggle theme. Click on it, it's gonna be dark. Let's review what we did so far. We created a React context and we exported theme context provider as a component, it returns a component named provider and pass current theme and a function to change the theme. The benefit of using React context is that in any other components, you can use this syntax to access to the current theme and change the theme. Let's define another component and use it. Create a new component named navbar.js inside that create a react functional component and copy the content of layout to this component and import by pressing control space set class to row because we are going to put two item next to each other Get rid of context.theme, create a div, react context app is the name of this app. And for the button, we have this button. For the next step, open index.css and define row here. Use display to flex and Justify content to space between. Also, we are going to define two class light CSS class. Set background color to a light color like this and the color itself to a dark color. Copy and paste it. Rename to dark and exchange dark and light color. The next step is gonna be going to layout, get rid of content inside div and import navbar here. For the div, set class name to context.theme. Let's check the result. Aha, uh -huh. here the theme is light if I click on toggle theme, it's gonna be dark. Let's add another class to this. Wrap it inside backtick literal. Set class name to header and wrap context.theme inside dollar sign curly braces. Go to index.css and create header class. For the header, just set padding to 10 pixel. Yeah. This one is much better. We created a simple header that 
read the theme from React context. For the content, I'm going to go to layout and wrap the whole content inside a div and then render props.children. By having props.children, I can go to the usage of layout, which is app.js, and inside layout, I can render anything that I want. Let's define main content here as a component and create it main content.js inside that type rfc press tab to create main content and instead of div import theme context consumer inside that define context and let's render a div for this div i'm going to set it to content and concatenate this class with context.theme. Let's enter a message there like h1. Welcome to my app. And put a paragraph. Use context API to share data between components go to app.js and import it main content and save it in the index.css define a class for content set width to 500 pixel padding 50 pixel and margin 50 pixel auto let's check the results yeah here we have a header and a content. If I click on toggle theme, all components respect the new theme. Good, that's what we implemented using React Context API. Let's check the code. Inside index.js, we have used theme context provider. And by having this in the app component and all childs, like layout, we can use theme context consumer to access the theme and toggle theme. As we did in the navbar component, we have used context.toggle theme. When user click on this button, it's gonna change to dark or light. Great, that's what we did in this lesson learning react context in a simple application that create a header and a content that is theme based that's it about this lesson until next lesson bye bye use reducer is an alternative to use a state when you have complex state logic that involves multiple sub-values or when the next state depends on the previous one, we use a use reducer instead of use a state. What we're gonna build in this lesson is to create a list of users from a backend API. When you click on the button, you will see loading and after loading data, you will see a result. Let's go for it. Right click on SRC new file and set file name to userless.js type rfc and press tab to create functional components and inside this component let's define use reducer type use reducer select this one to auto import use reducer from react it accept two parameters the first parameter is a function let's set the name to reducer and second one is initial state for initial state i am going to set loading to false set users to empty array and set error to empty string 
It means that for getting data from backend, I'm not loading any data. List of users is empty array and there is no error at all. Now it's time to define reducer function. Out of the components, define reducer function. It's a function that accepts two parameters. The first one is a state, its current state, and second one is action. Action is an object that determines the type of action and the payload for that action. In the reducer function, we need to create a switch case. And the value that we check in switch case is action.type. We need to compare action.type with strings. The first case is users.request. I call this action right before sending AJAX request. So what I need to return as a new state is loading to true. Also, I'm going to keep previous state values and only change the loading one. I mean, the previous state is this, I'm going to change loading to true and keep users to empty array and error to empty string by having dot 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 state. Put semicolon, go for second case. When we send an API for users, there are two cases. The first one is users success. Getting data from backend, I mean there is no error in getting data. What I need to return, like before, is previous state and only change users. And the new value for users is coming from action.payload. Action.payload. Also, we need to change loading to false because at this point, we have data and there is no need to show loading at all loading to false the last case is error in getting data fail in getting users fail what do we need to return like always keep previous state and change error to the error that we passed through action.payload. Also, there is no need to show loading at all. To get rid of this warning, we need to have default case and for default case, return current state. I mean, we don't change state if action.payload is not user request, user success, or users fail. That's it about the reducer function. The reducer is a concept that is coming from Redux. Reducer is a function that accepts two value, state and action. And inside that, we return a new state based on the type of action. So inside our component, we need to dispatch an action and reducer based on the type of action and the payload of action returns a new state. Let's go to user list component and set user reducer return value to this object const. Put an array like any other hooks. The first element is state and second element is dispatch. Here is the code for defining a reducer. Save it to format your code. A state and dispatch are the return value of reuse reducer. By using a state, we can have access to the current state of application. And by having dispatch, we can change the state. Inside this component, we need to define a function 
to fetch data from backend define load users this function is an async function so define it as a async function in the load users first of all i'm gonna dispatch users request action that's the way to dispatch an action type dispatch and create an object set type to users underline request when it comes to run this line this action will run and state is gonna change to this loading gets true after setting loading to true in the state we need to create a try catch body and inside the try part we are going to fetch data from backend like previous examples we are going to use json placeholder scroll down to find users click on it and that's the api that we're gonna use to get list of users go to code and define response equal to use await fetch because fetch return a promise by using await we fetch the data not the promise the url is the copy text from the url here after that it's time to fetch data from response using this code await response.json json is a function it returns a promise and by using await we convert that to real data from backend after getting data it's time to change the state using dispatch type dispatch this time type of action is users success because at this point we successfully fetched data from backend and we need to set payload to the data from backend like this for the error part if there is an error dispatch set type to users fail and set payload to error dot message error is coming from catch and if there is an error in fetching data we change the state here fill the error with the error message that passed by action dot payload here also we set loading to false great we have load users and it's time to show loading error and user list in the screen create heading one set it to users and let's use a conditional rendering here if loading is true let's show a dev and show loading users otherwise if loading is false we have two condition if error has value we need to show error message create a dev error and the error value should be rendered in the screen otherwise i mean loading is false and there is no error it means that we can show list of users what i'm gonna do here is to create a table table header table row table cell user name duplicate that for email phone and website that's enough create table body and it's time to use map function on users users dot map map each user to this jsx table row table cell and show user dot name as a first column 
email, phone, and website. Rename them to email, phone, and website. Great. Also, don't forget we need to put colon here. If loading is true, show loading. If error has content, show the error. Otherwise, render list of users in this table. If we save the data, we get this structure. We get formatted the code like this, and we need to define loading, error, and users. To get them, I scroll up, and from state here, deconstruct state to get loading, error, and users from state. Save and it's time to use load users. Where is the place to fetch data from backend in a React component? For sure, it's in use effect. Define use effect, select this one to auto import it. And as a first parameter, define this function. And as a second parameter, pass empty array to run it on component did mount. Inside use effect, just call load users. That's it. Great, it's time to test it. Go to app.js from previous lesson. I'm gonna get rid of them and use user list. Press tab to import it and close it. Save and don't forget to run npm start. If you already have npm start running, just open your browser at this address. Loading users, and here is the result. Let's open Chrome Dev Tools and get rid of this warning. It says each child in a list should have a unique key. Go to user list and right after map function here set key to to user dot name if we refresh the data there is no error at all and go to network select slow 3g and refresh the list this time you will see loading users clearly and after loading data you will see list of users converted to no turtling and that's the result it's time to add reload button it's super easy right after heading one create a button reload users and for unclick call load user without parentheses yeah we have reload users if you click on it loading gets through and after loading data you will see data here let's test error scenario in the network no turtling select offline and click on reload users what do you get it says error failed to fetch because the user's api at this address return this error and by having this error, we show that error to the users. Change it to no turtling, click refresh users. And as you see, we have a bug here because we have users, but it doesn't show them here. To fix it, go to users list and in success scenario, set error to empty string. It means that after getting successful data, we need to update error message to empty a string and it means that there is no error and we want to show users. Save it and uh -huh. this time if we set to offline, click reload users, we are getting this error. And if we getting to no turtling and click on reload users, we get the users. Great, let's review what we did in this lesson. We have used use reducer hook to manage a complex state in our React component. 
we have three sub value for the state including loading error and data and if you check the render part here they are related to each other when there is an error we shouldn't show data and we should show only error message by defining this reducer function we can handle complex state using this switch case and by using this patch we can update the state based on the name of the action and the payload of that action for the last part of this lesson we can add a style to the code just define class name to main and open index.css at the very end define main class set width to 800 pixel padding to 50 pixel margin to 50 auto to make it center aligned and set border radius to 10 pixel also we can make table header cells left aligned and here is the result good that's it about this lesson until next lesson bye bye This lesson is about creating pages in React app. We need to be able to create multiple pages and link them through a package named React Router DOM. Here is the result. We are going to create three pages, a header that contains three links. When you click on home, you will have home screen. Click on product, you have product screen with sub routes and about a screen also we will use react router dom parameters to create parametric url let's say when i click on product one the url is product slash one and i can access to the value one in the component also we will learn how to programmatically redirect user to other pages using use history hook and we will try lots of features in React Router DOM package. Let's see how. In this lesson, we are going to use React Router to build single page applications. When we want to have multiple pages in our React app, we need to use a package named React Router DOM. Let's install this package. Open terminal and type npm install react router dom we are going to create three pages and handle them by react router dom inside src create a new folder set folder name to pages and inside that create three pages the first one is homepage.js and inside that create a react functional component and inside the dev enter home page duplicate this for about page rename it to about and duplicate that for product page enter product the next step is gonna be showing these pages when user click on their link so the next step is gonna be creating links go to app.js and get rid of user list which is about previous lesson and create a tag named browser router press tab to import browser router from react router dom 
browser router is the core component of React router application and it provides URL path in the browser to the React components. Inside that, we are going to create a div for header and another div for content. And inside that, create a link. Link is another component from React Router DOM. Link component render anchor in the screen, but it doesn't have href like anchor. It's two. And the first one is gonna point to the home page. The root is gonna be home page. And the name of link is home page. Duplicate that for product and about. Save it to format your code. And it's time to create routes. To create routes, we use switch component from React Router DOM. Type switch to auto import from React Router DOM here. And inside that, we define routes. To define a route, type route and press tab to import route from React Router DOM. Route component accepts a parameter named path. And for the first one, I'm gonna set about. And inside route, we define the component that we are going to render. We are going to render about component, about page. It's coming from SRC pages about page and close it. Go to product page and rename about to product. In the app.js, we need to define another route. The second route set path name to product. And inside that, when user enter slash product in the URL, we are going to render product page. Import product page from pages slash product page. It's product. Save. And the last route that we are going to define is home page the path is gonna be slash and inside that render home page we have this recommendation just click on it to auto import it here that's it we defined a switch from react router dom package a switch looks through its children i mean routes and renders the first one that matches the current URL. So by having browser router, switch, route, and link, we are ready to create a single page application that have three paths. Let's update the two part for product. It should be exactly equal to the product in the path props of route and about the same value should be here for about. And by having this code, we are ready to test our application. If you don't have application running, run npm start to see the results. Yes, here is the result. We have home link, product link, and about link. The page that we see here is home page. If I click on product, it's gonna be product page and the URL is a slash product. And when I click on about, it's gonna be about page. Let's add some style to make it much better. Open index.css. At the very end, create pages class, set width to let's say 800 pixel and background color to light blue. Create page header, create a padding 
like 10 pixel and background color to gray, light gray and duplicate that for page content and make it more light gray. Save it and use them in the about. Set class name to page header and here set class name to page content. Save it and wrap it inside a dev. The two dev put them inside a parent dev because we are going to set class name of the parent to pages. In the index.css for pages, set margin to 50 pixel auto. Here is the result. We have home, product, and about, and we are in about a screen. Let's put a space between them inside app.js. You can create space using curly braces and inside single quotes, put space here and here. Yeah, there is a space between them. If I click on home, it's home page. Product is product page and about is about page. In the product page, I'm going to define parameter. Go to product page and here define a UL and a lie. Define a link to slash product slash one. It's product one and let's copy and paste it for product two and three. Change it to two and three and let's import link from React Router DOM. Save it to format your code and let's check the result. Here we have product one, product two and product three. When I click on product one, what happens? Nothing changes. To reflect the parameter one to the product route, we can use parameter in the route. Go to app.js and define another route. Set path similar to product, but put an slash. Here we are going to define a parameter. To define a parameter, use dot and enter a name for parameter like ID and define product page here. So product page respond to product and product slash product ID. Inside the product, I'm going to get the ID. To get the ID, use params hook. Define get ID using object deconstruction from use params. It's a hook from React Router DOM and it returns the parameter inside the URL and we can use it here inside the render part, check ID. If it does exist, create a dev to show product ID to the user, otherwise render this UL. Save it and let's check the result. When we click on product, we get three products here and when we click on product one, we get product ID one. So the ID has value one and because it's true, this condition will be rendered. And if it's null, I mean, when you click on product, there is no slash ID here. It renders list of products for us. If I click on product three, you will have product page and product ID is equal to three. It's very useful to implement product details page. Also, we can define nav link instead of link in app.js. I mean here. Nav link 
is a special type of link that can style itself as active when its two props matches the current location. Let's see how. Change it to nav link and auto import it here. I mean here and set active class name equal to active. Copy this, paste it here and do it for others about and product and copy and paste active for product and for about. Save your code and here is the change. We need to define active inside index.css at the very end define active and set font weight to bold. And here is the result. When home is active, we have a home page. When I click on product, product is active, but home is active too. Let's fix the issue here. Go to nav link for home and set exact. We are setting it to true. And by setting exact to true, the URL should be exactly like home, not starting with this. Yeah, can you see this? This time home, product, and about. If we go to the product details, still product is active. Sometimes we want to redirect user, then click on a button. Let's see how. Here I'm going to create a button and enter the caption to see about page and define unclick to go to about page. Let's define go to about page as a function and inside this function we are going to redirect user to about page programmatically not using link like this. To do that, we need to use another hook, which is use history. Define history equal to use history. It's coming from React Router DOM. And inside the function, call push method of history like this. Save it and let's test it. Yeah, product page, product ID is one. And when I click on see about page, I get redirected to the about page without clicking on links. Let's see if we decide to redirect user to home page when click on product three in the product page. And before the return, let's have a condition F ID equal to three, we are going to redirect user to home page, return, use redirect component from React Router DOM and set to home page. That's it. Three is a string, so it should be a string. When I go to products, product one, show product one, product two, show product two. But when I click on product three, I get redirected to home screen. This feature is very useful to implementing protected routes. When user don't have access to a route, we can redirect user to the login page. Great. It's a very simple introduction to React Router DOM and we have learned how to create pages in app.js using switch and routes and wrapping and wrapping them inside browser router and also we have learned how to define navigation links and regular links also we have used parameters in the URL and show the parameter in the screen. And we can 
programmatically redirect user to the other pages using history.push. The last part of this lesson was about redirect component from React Router DOM, and it's very useful to redirect user to other pages based on their authentication status. That's it about this lesson. Until next lesson, bye-bye. In this lesson, we are going to create a web lock system using React. All the concepts in the advanced section of this course will be implemented and you will learn them in practice in this React application. First of all, we start by creating a context for changing the theme from dark to light and light to dark. After that, we go for use reducer to fetch data from a backend API. We will not implement the API at first and we will use this mock API from JSON placeholder. But at the end of this lesson, I teach you how to implement an API for this React application using Node and MongoDB. After that, we will go for use effect and we will use that to filter post based on the author. I mean, when you click on an author, you will see only posts of that author. Also, you will learn how to search for a post. Let's say I enter a keyword and I will see all posts that include this keyword. The next part of this lesson is about routing. We have multiple routes, including homepage, post details page, login page, and more. We implement a very simple authentication system in this lesson and you can enter sample email or password or you can register in this system and create a new account and after login you will be redirected to the profile page and you can update your profile there. Also there is an option to create a post and you can enter title and body to create a new post. At the end of this lesson, you will add a new button here to change the API from mock to real. And for real backend API, I teach you how to create a simple backend in about 50 lines of code using Node and MongoDB. By having real API, all data will be saved and you can have a real block system for you to publish that as a sample project or your blog on the internet. Let's add a new post and click on create. It will create the new post and if you go to the home screen, you will have your new post here and when you click on it, you will see the details of that post and the user that created that post. If I search for that post and click on go, it shows that post for us and we can see the details here. That's a very simple blogging system that uses all the advanced concepts of React and you can improve that by adding categories, tags, showing images and a lot more feature. Let's get to code and implement this blogging system together. Here is the plan. First of all, we are going to create a React application, open VS Code, and from Terminal, click New Terminal, go to your desktop folder, and inside that, run npx, create React app, and set the app name to React Awesome dash block, and press Enter wait for installing packages and creating React Awesome block in your desktop folder. And then from file, add folder to workspace and go to desktop and select React Awesome block and click on add. Here you will have the files inside this newly created folder and it's the default React application to start coding. The next step is going to be running CD. 
react awesome blog and run npm start to run your react application there we are we are going to convert this to this application let's go for header open src and create a new folder inside src and set the name to components then right click on it create navbar.js type rfc tab to create a react functional component and inside that we are going to return header set class name of this component to header inside that create a div and set class name to header item inside header item create a link to the home page and set the title to awesome blog we can wrap it inside strong to make it bold like this and save it to format your code then create another header item set class name to header item and what we're gonna do here is to create a login link slash login that's it let's go to app.js get rid of content here and create a div set class name for this div to container we are going to create a container class and import nav bar component that we created Arial here next to nav bar we're gonna build another div and set class name to main it's gonna contains the main content of our application and create a footer class create a div and set class name of this div to footer for footer just type awesome blog all right reserved and for the main content just put heading one posts and create ul li h2 post one and paragraph post one content duplicate that for post two it's just sample post save it to structure your code let's check the result here is header footer and content but they are not structured like this having headers item in one line having full height for main content and having footer at the end center aligned let's add some style to this and let's see what happens to add a style go to index.css here and for root id root id is in the public index.html and it's right here we are going to make this div which is the container of all components to full height to do that set height to 100 viewport height vh next style is for container for container class we're gonna use display flex and make flex direction to column and set minimum height to 100 viewport height for the main element set padding to let's say 100 10 pixel and set flex to auto by setting flex to auto it occupied the remaining part of the height it's time to set a style for header and footer let's go for header like padding for main set padding for header but for 
height set minimum height to 50 pixel do the same for footer let's check the result yes this time the full content is for main we have 50 pixel for header and 50 pixel for footer let's make footer center aligned it's super simple we're gonna use display flex justify content center and align items center when you want to put something in center just use this three styles can you see this for header it's a bit different a display is flex but we're gonna put a space between items in header so we use justify content space between but make it center aligned vertically using align items center here is the result i'm gonna add light style and it's gonna set background color to light like e0 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 and set color to dark like 202020 and use light inside app.js next to container great to separate header and footer from the main content let's add border button for header find header and set border button to one pixel set color to gray and solid copy this go for footer but this time set border top for footer save good compare this with this very similar to each other let's set the color for anchors I scroll up right before classes create anchor because it's an element and it should be above classes set color to let's say three zero five zero nine zero and text decoration to null to none to get rid of underline and for hover set color to orange like f0 8040 good here is the result nice great in this lesson we created a simple layout for our awesome block application and for the next lesson we implement context to change the theme from dark to light and light to dark to make it like this